Hello, and welcome to the NFPA Link YouTube channel. This page is dedicated to answering key questions you have related to electrical and life safety. With easy to use digital access to NFPA codes and standards, NFPA Link is your window to productivity. Today, we've been asked to address the Residential Emergency Disconnect requirements within the National Electrical Code, or NEC. So from the homepage on NFPA Link, I have the 2023 National Electrical Code bookmark. So we're gonna go into that, and we're gonna to navigate to section 23085, which is where the emergency disconnect requirements are contained. But I also wanna pull up the language uh, by using the reference panel where I've saved the 2020 section 23085, so we can look at that language from both areas. A lot of times when changes are made within the NEC, uh, people always wonder about the why. What's the intent? Um, why is the change being made? And this one, uh, from an emergency disconnect standpoint, I think is pretty clear uh, that it's the intent is to help uh, first responders uh, to be able to shut the power down to that residence um, to be able to safely uh, work in that area. Um, and I wanted to share uh, public input 3001, which came in on behalf of the International Association of Firefighters um, and read in part the substantiation that they said as to uh, why this change needed to be made. Uh, so in part, it reads, control of electrical power inside dwellings is critical for the mitigation of shock, explosion, and fire damage during emergencies. In some areas of the country, the main electrical panel is inside a garage or basement where access is limited and conditions could be hazardous to enter for controlling of the electrical power. Examples include gas leaks, flooding, or fires. In these locations, the only equipment located on the exterior is the meter, which is not a safe option for removing power, placing unqualified personnel at risk. Interior rescue operations of victims does not allow waiting for utility workers to arrive to secure power to a dwelling. The International Association of Firefighters represents over 300,000 career firefighters serving communities that protect over 85% of the U.S. population. Yet this code change would decrease risks for all 1.2 million firefighters serving the entire U.S. So I think it's easy to understand looking at this that this change was made to help those individuals that spend their lives helping us uh, and keeping us safe. Uh, so with that, digging into this change, um, 23085 in the 2020 NEC, which you can see on the right here, um, stated initially that the in, for one and two family dwelling units, uh, so that's what this would apply to here, all service conductors must terminate in a disconnecting means having a short circuit current rating equal or greater to the available fault current installed in a readily accessible outdoor location. If more than one disconnect is provided, they must be grouped, and each disconnect shall be one of the following. So it gives you three options, and then the final item there, markings shall comply with 11021B. So as we move over to the center of the screen and look at the language from 23085 in the 2023 NEC, we can see that there were some changes there made. Now, a lot of that information, or all of that information is still contained within the 2023 that was in the 2020, but now we have a little more structure to it um, and a few more uh, things that were added for clarity. Um, so initially, if we look at part A of 23085, the first thing is the location. The disconnecting means shall be installed in a readily accessible location, outdoors, um, on or within sight of the dwelling unit. Now, that's pretty clear, um, but in some scenarios, we may have a situation where uh, the main disconnect may be located at a pedestal uh, out at the road uh, and then feed the disconnect. And in that case, uh, those conductors that would feed the home would become outdoor feeders, uh, which would be covered under Article 225. So there's an exception here uh, that says where the requirements of 225.41 are met, this section shall not apply. So it's essentially how, uh, how the wiring is done to feed the home. But 225.41, if we pull that up, um, we're not gonna go through it in its entirety, but it's very similar language um, in what the expectation is for that emergency disconnect to be installed. Um, so know that that's there in the application um, where that emergency or the, the service disconnect is located remotely uh, from the home in turn 
having those conductors coming to feed the home become outdoor feeders. Uh, the rating of the disconnect has to have a short circuit current rating equal to or greater than the available fault current. So the available fault current has to be addressed. And then again, here's the grouping requirement that we saw in the 2020. If one or more disconnecting means is provided, they need to be grouped. Options are given for what the disconnects can be. Uh, so you have a service disconnect, a meter disconnect that's integral uh, to meter mounting equipment, um, and then another disconnect or switch circuit breaker that's marked for suitable as service equipment. Replacement is a key piece that was added in the 2023 NEC. So where service equipment is replaced, all of these requirements shall apply. So in the case where a service is being upgraded, that new service would need to have an emergency disconnect located on the outside uh, of the structure. Um, now the exception to that is where only meter sockets, service entrance conductors, or related raceways and fittings are replaced the requir requirements of this section shall not apply. Uh, so a scenario where you could think uh, where that might happen is for where there was an ice storm um, and an overhead service, maybe a branch fell on that, pulled down the overhead mast, uh, maybe damaged the hub in the meter to the point where you have to replace the electrical meter. So now you're just replacing the meter itself and that overhead mast uh, with the conductors. In that particular case, uh, there's an exception there that you would not have to necessarily install that emergency disconnect. You could, uh, but it wouldn't be required based on this exception. But any uh, service, any new services or service upgrades would require uh, that emergency service disconnect to be installed. Um, D has identification of other isolation disconnects. So if we have other energy source systems um, not located adjacent to the emergency disconnect where there could be some other means, maybe solar that's feeding power to the home, you need to put a placard directory uh, identifying the location of all the equipment uh, to isolate these other energy sources that could be present. Uh, marking of the disconnect uh, is a big piece. Um, so the disconnect itself, if it's depending on the three different types you could have, the marking is listed here what it needs to say. Um, so for example, service disconnect needs to read as emergency disconnect, comma service disconnect, and that needs to be mounted or, or uh, labeled on the disconnect itself. Uh, the marking location uh, goes into that a little more in size. Uh, so the marking or labels shall be located on the outside front of the disconnect enclosure with a red background and white text. So it's pretty clear um, it needs to be red background, white text, and then also in sub two, the letters have to be at least a half inch high. So there's some criteria here specific to that, um, how it has to be marked. And then it also needs to comply with 11021B. And if we look at 11021B, that has to deal with the durability of that label. Uh, so we're talking exterior location here. So that label would need to be durable uh, and sufficient to withstand any you know, environmental conditions that would, would impact that. Um, so this is just the standard. This is referenced quite a bit throughout the NEC when we talk labeling, making sure that those labels are going to be withstanding uh, that environment that they're installed in. Um, so it would need to meet that as well. So, uh, you know, in a lot of cases, uh, disconnects are already being installed on the outside of the home based on the distance that the service entrance conductors have to travel into the home. Um, and, and in that case, really, uh, you know, the disconnect is already there. As long as we're meeting this criteria, it just needs to have a label now installed, labeling that as the emergency disconnect, service disconnect that meets the parameters of what the label needs to say. Um, some jurisdictions, uh, you know, are even requiring that themselves where it has to have an exterior disconnect on the home. So really, you know, it, it may not be as big of an impact uh, to some areas as it may be to other, uh, you know, individuals that maybe don't install things that way in particular. So we hope this provided some insight into residential emergency disconnect requirements within the NEC. For more information about how NFPA Link gives you the knowledge you need to get the job done right, please visit www.nfpa.org forward slash link.